I was on a I was on a suicide mission pretty much, you know. Uh, I said either I'm gonna run out of money or I'm gonna die. And uh, I ran out of money, and uh, I still didn't die. You said you would have done something nuts. Yeah. Something nuts like what? What would you have done? That's what I did. I robbed a bank. That's what I did. How did you map that out? Like, what you well, I was taught in the military how to conduct guerrilla operations. I pretty much went operational. I conducted a military operation when I robbed the bank. He pulled out a pistol and said, I should blow your brains out. And I said, you'll be doing me a favor. And he looked at me, he was like, you're sick enough that you want me to do it. I was like, yeah, man, I'll probably, I'll be able to get some sleep finally. Grew up in Park Slope, Brooklyn. Um, it's, we considered a dysfunctional neighborhood. And uh, I'm definitely a product of my environment. Uh, Park Slope in the 70s was a, a working class neighborhood. And uh, all the kids were out in the street all day playing uh, crack top, wiffle ball, stick ball. And uh, everybody knew everybody, like everybody else's parents looked out for everybody else. And the neighbors, like they, they would bring plates of food over. My mother actually, uh, there's a pizzeria, Pino's Pizzeria. He lived in our house for a while when he came over from Italy. Uh, Kenny the Mover lived in our house. That's how we weren't back then. We took care of each other. Sure. It was wonderful, uh, quiet, respectful do anything you'd ever want him to do. I would agree. A gentle soul, I would say, when he was young. Mm -hmm. Well, Michael and my children and our brother Mark, they all grew up together. Uh, my sister is 19 years older than me. That's Margaret. My sister Jerry is 17 years older than me. And my brother was one year younger than me. And we looked like, the crazy thing about me and my brother, we looked like twins, but we were totally opposites. Like, the idols I had when I was growing up were not movie stars or, or, or sports athletes. They were. You know, bank robbers, gangsters, you know, uh, Hell's Angels. Back when we grew up, you know, Michael was always there for anybody. You know, if he, if he was, whether it was your, your fam his family or his friends, he'd give you the shirt off his back. You know, if you had a problem, it was Michael's problem back then. I know my mother loved him desperately. She'd go walking the streets looking for him if he wasn't home at night. My mother used to worry a lot about me because I had like a wild streak. I started drinking in the bar at age 15 because I looked older. So I'd be hanging out in the bar with all these guys. And my mother would come and, where's my, my son? He's in the back with the, in the girls' bathroom. So I'd be in the girls' bathroom smoking weed with all my friends, like 10 guys in the girls' bathroom. Boom, boom, boom. I open the door. There's my mother. Mikey, what the hell are you doing? She's in her robe and her slippers. You know, I'm really embarrassed, you know? And she dragged me home. And then she'd fall asleep and I'd go back out again. As we grew up, Michael went into doing drugs. Michael called me when he was about 18, 19, told me he had a problem. He was doing coke. Well, like I said, it's like family. It's like, it's like brotherly love, you know? You want to smack the shit out of him, and then you want to hug him, and then you want to, you know, drag him off to rehab, and then you want to fucking go hang out and do it with him. <laughs> I remember getting into a lot of fights here, though. This really, I, I really learned to become a good... Uh, I was schooling the art of fisticuffs right outside this door here. It was like, uh, it's, it was, this bar was crazy like that. Where guys used to come in from Windsor Terrace and like tear up the bar. So like every week I'd be out in the middle of the street fighting. And uh, I found out later that bookies were taking bets on me and sending guys down to, to fight me. And then eventually the bar cleared out and I got, got to be a better place. But I, I had a lot of wild times here. American Brooklyn, the name American Brooklyn comes from people asking me, what's my ethnicity? And I don't give them the opportunity to label me. When, I, when somebody asks me, what's my ethnicity? I tell them American and they get pissed off. I say American. No, 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 what are you? I say American. American what? American Brooklyn. For some reason, I get a lot of chances. I don't know why. Because I know I don't deserve all the chances I get. But uh, people have mercy on me. Uh, I had thought about it and I said, you know, this life ain't for me. So the next day I went and I, I, uh, I took the, uh, I signed up for the advert for the military and I didn't show up for work the next day. And they got really nervous, you know? So I went back the day after that, and I said, they were like, what happened, bro? What, what, how come you didn't come back to work? We were worried. We thought something happened. I was like, listen, I, I talked to Tony on the side. I said, Tony, I, uh, I'm thinking about joining the Army. He's like, Mike, go with my blessing. This life ain't for you. And that's when I decided to go to the military. And then when I found out in the military is that those are the biggest gangsters in the world, the U.S. Army. And I, I got into 100,000 more times violence than that day that I ever would have gotten into. And uh, I got caught up in a lot more shit than I, I, I could ever imagine. So anyway, 
anyway, I love school. I found out that with the GED, I can go to college. Uh, I went to Kingsborough. I was spent one year at Kingsborough, and I was doing a moving job with uh, my friend Al, Alan Moore. And one day, there's another guy in the job, Gino Blanco. And, and Al had brought him on the job purposely for me, because Al knows I play football in the neighborhood. So he said, you want to tr try out for Brooklyn? You want to come down to Brooklyn College? I said, I'm in uh, Kingsborough. I, I haven't finished yet. Don't worry about it. I'll talk to the coach. I met Michael about eight or nine years ago when he took a screenwriting class. And he impressed me as a personality that I had not encountered. He's been in college for the last 20 years, on and off. If I li listened to her, I would never be still in school. I would never graduate. I would have dropped out a long time ago, even though it's taken me 20 years to get to the point I am. I'm a, I'm a senior now. And if, if I listen to that negativity, which is all I really get from my sister, but I'm not going to do to her what she does to me. You know, because I, I still believe in that family sticks together. But it just hurts sometimes that they're not willing to do for me as much as I'm willing to do for them. I, this is my third time in qualifying. The second time, I would go do Excalibur again. And then Jasmine gave me the idea of uh, trying to write about my life history because she heard a little bit about it and it sounded interesting. And she thought that it would be helpful to me, which it has, you know. I wrote, I wrote the screenplay like Jasmine suggested, and I was in class with Professor Tutak. And I was uh, pitching my screenplay, and he was like, that's impossible, it can't happen. Who believes that this is, this is true, this story? No one believed me. And then I said, actually, it is true. Like, I came out to the class, this, this is true, this is my story. You know, I'm a convicted bank robber. You know, I was addicted to drugs and alcohol. And uh, this is my life story, and it's true. Well, I remember the time that he stopped me as I was walking out of the building to tell me that he had borrowed a camera from the equipment room and that had, he had taken it and he had sold it because there were people who expected him to pay him, to pay them money, and he didn't have the money to pay them. That's my understanding of, of his side of it. My side of it is that he stole our camera. He immediately came to me and told me what he had done. Uh, he, so he's someone who I take at his word. He's never, he's never deceived me purposefully. I mean, I know that he can't always live up to what he wants to do. I, I know that he makes promises that he doesn't always keep. But that's, not, that's different from not telling the truth. I learned the skills of, of how to rob a bank in the military. And I, I went operational. I, I did a military plan. But I, did it, I, I, I knew several bank robbers growing up. And I met one bank robber in uh, the Veterans Hospital. And he told me how to do it with a note. He said, don't ever use a gun. Use a note. You get less time. But, uh, the pen is mighty in the sword. So I implied, I, th I implied a threat in my note, but it wasn't uh, overtly stated. So I was able to get off uh, with a nonviolent charge. And so she went to the back. Then I remember standing there talking to a guy in the army uniform, telling my whole army history and shit. We're having a conversation. Then I turn my head and I see the cops walking through the vestibule. And as he opens the door, I'm like, yo, the guy over there got a gun. And he's like, they all ran in after the guy over there in the corner. And I, and I went out and got in the car. So as he's pulling out the spot, the guy was so pissed off. He's like, get the fuck out of the car. He's going to shoot me. I got out of the car. They're like smacking the shit out of me. Then the next thing I know, I black out. I'm in the back seat of a police car. And I'm like handcuffed. And I look out. And uh, I just remember these old, I never forget the old look on the old Haitian man's face. And the old ladies are like, they're like shaking their head. It's like, damn. I was uh, arrested, you know? And I was in the cell. And my brother was a correction officer. So I'm laying down on the floor of the cell, and like the bars are behind me like this. So I'm laying on the floor so I can get some air because they had the plexiglass. Of the... They had the plexiglass on, on the bars, so the, the little bottom was open. So I'm laying on the floor so I can get some air. It was so hot in there. And then I, the guard comes and yells, Shlomo, I jump up and turn around, and I stand in like a, there was a mirror image of, of, my, of myself, but instead of being me, all disheveled and, and uh, you know, dirty looking, it was my brother in a uniform. And again, the captain was looking at me and looking at him and shaking his head. My brother brought me out of the cell. He's like, bro, come on, man. I don't know why you keep doing this to me. Uh, my mother made my brother promise that he would take care of me. And he did. I was always living in his house. Uh, right now, I'm staying at his wife's house with my, with my nieces and nephews. And, and I had a conversation with her this morning. And I was telling her about this film. And she saw, she let me stay in the house. And before this film, I had relapsed. And just like everybody else, she said, like, she says, Michael, what's wrong? Because truth is, I'm worried, I'm worried that, I'm, that I have it in me to stay sober. I'm scared because my track record, I've always faltered, and I don't want to falter. And, uh, you know, since I was a kid, 
that's what I did. That's what we did. And that's how I, I handled my emotions is by drinking and drugging. That, that's the only way I know how to do it. And uh, I know that it, I pretty much feel that this is my last opportunity to change. And she, she had the same conversation with me this morning that, you know, Michael, you're running out of chances. You might not have another one. And to tell you the truth, I don't think I do have another chance. I don't have another run in me. And uh, I'm scared. Talk is cheap, action is reap. The words I say, their vows I keep. You may be strong, but I'm not weak. To tell the truth, I don't like to lie. I'll pay the consequences, I'd rather die. Knock me down, I'll get back up. Never claiming I am tough. And as I travel through my life, I always do what I feel is right. And when I make a mistake, I do my best to set it straight. But if it doesn't work out, I know I did my best, without a doubt. <laughs> Got the beautiful rack focus. Yeah, look at that. The only thing I have is my word. I have no uh, material value. Oh, yeah, there's a shadow cat right there. Oh! oh careful. Careful. careful! That was gangster! <laughs>